bountiful day in this hollow earth. A beautiful day for a hybrid. Do they shift shape? Boy, I feel great. Won't you be my cousin? Good morning, everybody all around this hollow hologram earth. We have more in common than we have in conflict with each other, y'all. So work it out. Work it out. Let's inspire each other. Let's work together. We all on the same team, y'all. And the best way to start the day together, as you know, is this right here. Shrimp for breakfast, y'all. Oh, shit. We got the homegrown and we got the home brew. And we're here with you to start this day right. Still a little stuffy. <sighs> Gotta huff those nice coffee fumes, those black coffee fumes to get the engine started. Watch the UFC countdown with the kids this morning before school. Exciting weekend. Great UFC pay-per-view this weekend for all the fight fans out there. For all the martial arts enthusiasts out there. Shout out. Also, NBA All-Star Weekend. So, big weekend for your boy. Hopefully, have some friends over Sunday night. Hopefully, feeling up for it. Oh, shit. Oh, that's tasty. Mmm. Feels good to be getting back to work, back into the routine after being on that Grammy trip, after getting that Grammy COVID strain, that COVID bay, that COVID Tay Tay, that COVID ice, spice, you know what I'm saying? I'll take it. <coughs> Hobnobbing, rubbing shoulders, rubbing elbows with the Hollywood A-list, you know what I'm saying? I stay rolling on the G-list. Top of the shrimp list. Uh, let's see what else is going on today. Oh, um, Ghost Fest is coming back, y'all. We are announcing it right here, right now. Wore this sweatshirt to remind myself. God damn, that works well. Ghost Fest is going to be August 5th through 12th. And if you were invited last year, you're invited again. We're going to invite a few more people this year. We're going to push it a little bit. Maybe see if we can get up to 40 people here at Ghost Fest. And last year it was focused around a long weekend. Friday to Monday vibe. And uh, we're going to focus the main event around the weekend as well on the back end of those dates. Um, but some of the, especially the Ghost Scout crew who's used to spending a lot of time here, you know, weekend is like, you know, barely showing up for them. They wanted to stay a little bit longer. Some of them did come early. But uh, we're opening up the week before, so if you want to come Monday or anytime during the week to kind of get your camping time in and hang out and get that, get that, come into that, come into this alternate dimension of the Ghost Shrimp National Forest and slip out of time a little bit. A week here is like a month in the regular world. It's like a, it's like a, you step out of time. You know, we live in our own dimension here. It's a parallel creative universe here in the Gosham National Forest. Um, so if you want to come early and hang out extra, you know, we'll probably get in a little hike, hit Mansfield maybe, hit the beach, of course, um, get in some of those other fun activities that the scouts love to get into. But yeah, it's going to stay invite only. Um, you know, if you want to come, you can hit me up. Um, you know, all the Ghost Scouts that, that love what we do here and enjoy what we do here are always welcome. Hit me up. Um, 
And uh, I'd love to get some more workshop alumni up in here. Some of the people that we invited last year that didn't get to come, you know, mark the calendar, book the tickets. Um, it's going to be a rip roaring time. Hag it out, smoke it out, having campfires, you know, watching movies, playing kickball. We had a rowdy kickball game to close it out last year. We'll probably open up with a rowdy kickball game this year because it was like one of the absolute highlights of ghost fest last year and uh and and some of the people that left uh, a day early missed it so i uh, would love to get just everybody feeling those vibes so probably hit a little kickball on saturday uh, but yeah we'll open it up friday night for the main events and then you know hang out saturday hang out sunday and then people will take off on monday so for the uh for the weekend warriors, we got that, you know, that that nice weekend vibe. And for the for the long campers, we're gonna open it up for the week before. Um, I think we'll have some residents up in the cabins too. We always have uh art residencies for homies up in the cabins all summer long. Talk to a few people about that. My girl Annabelle Popa and the world-renowned Eleanor Machoka, one of my colleagues from Midnight Gospel. And, uh, you know, I couldn't even do her justice listing off our credits, but I think she art-directed the first season of Steven Universe. Um, you know, she was the head background designer of Midnight Gospel. Art-directed Carol on Netflix. Tons of other shit. I don't even know it all. But she's a superstar. And, uh, you know, we've developed a friendship and uh, by working together and I did a little talk for her class over at, uh, what was it, SCU? And uh, she's working on some stuff over at Disney now. And she wants to come and just get away from it all and relax in the Gosher National Forest, y'all. Who doesn't? This is the greatest place on earth. You know what I'm saying? It's the 420th wonder of the world. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And speaking of 420, y'all, April 20th, your boy is having the book release party for The Lost Forest. My adult coloring book coming out from Penguin Random House, the largest book publisher in the world. It's starting to get close now. We're in February. It's coming out in April, right? So 420. We're having a community book release here at the Galaxy Bookshop in Hardwick, Vermont of 420. So if you want to come out and do a little coloring in the Lost Forest Coloring Book with your boy, show up and show out. We're going to have a great old time. Get the community down here. Get the homies down here. Have some fun. And celebrate one of the coolest things that's ever happened to me in my career. You know, people have always talked about me doing a coloring book. And then the biggest book publisher in the world came along and said, do you want to do a coloring book? And I said, oh, fuck yeah. So we did it. And I'm really proud of it. Absolutely full of Gosha personal mythology, the beehive boy, the hive god makes multiple appearances in there. And we're really setting it up to be the first of many. You know, we're talking to them about more books. So if you haven't gone over to GoshamGlobal.com yet and uh, got yourself a copy, pre-order $17. That's like the cheapest way you can get your hands on any kind of Gosham regalia, memorabilia, you know what I'm saying, merch. Um, there is plenty of merch on the website, of course, so check that out. Support your boy. Show your boy some love. And I did a post on the Patreon yesterday, y'all. Uh, you know, part of the idea of getting into these shrimp or breakfast episodes is I'm always trying to work the podcast back into my life. It's not an easy thing because I've got so many things going on. And when something falls out of rhythm, sometimes it's like harder than you would even think to get it back in. It's weird like that, especially it's like, you know, also I make a great effort now to spend a lot of time with my kids and my wife, you know, family and, and, you know, get the friends in there too. I'm very busy and I got to work a lot, but I used to work all the time. And, you know, as I really grew into fatherhood, I realized how 
how important it is to just be there even when you're just doing nothing with your kids. You know, I used to sit around and be like, I'm wasting my time, you know, sitting there when nothing was happening. But, uh, you know, that's what the stuff of life is. It's just hanging out with your kids, just sitting there, just talking, just, just playing toys, just whatever, you know, even if it's not like an event, you know, just, just hanging out with your kids. Um, you know, and, and, and getting in that QT with the QT, uh, Athena Bandit, the love of my life, you know, you gotta, you gotta really, you know, be putting in the effort in the relationships too. It's easy to take your relationships for granted, especially when you love your career so much. You love, I love being at the desk. There's truly nothing more than I love in life than just, you know, being at the desk. I mean, of course I love my kids in a way that is unmatched, you know, and I love Athena in a way that is so unique. You know, and my friends and my family are so important to me. Um, and, 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 you know, other pursuits as well. But, you know, there is nothing when I, when I'm sitting down at the desk, you know, I'm having a, 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 a conversation with the universe. You know, we've been talking about this a lot lately, having a conversation with the art gods where I cease to be myself, my physical self. I leave the physical world and I am inside this creative, inspirational conversation with every piece of art that has ever been created and every piece of art that will ever be created. And I'm just like drawing the lines that are the continuum, that are the timeline, you know, of art and creativity. And it, and it, and it, and it makes me feel a way that nothing absolutely ever could or would or will, you know, it's, it is my purpose on this earth. Like, it's not just like, this is my job or like, I like to make art. Like, like if I don't do it, it like fucks my head up. Like I forget who I am if I don't do it. And, and maybe if you, you feel like you don't know who you are and like, you're not sure what you're doing right now. It's, it's probably cause you're off that beam. You're off that path, whatever that is for you. Right. I have to be walking that line, walking that path. I have to be blazing that trail, you know, of course, I'm, you know, walking in, you know, on the shoulders of giants and, and, and walking the footsteps of, you know, setting up these, these pathways for all the future artists. But, you know, really, I'm there and it's, it's just, you know, me at one with the universe, you know, and I'm not thinking about, you know, we talk about all these other things that are connected to it, but I'm not thinking about anything at the time. I'm just there in absolute Zen, in absolute enlightenment, and, and, and I'm lost and I'm gone and I'm, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm a magician weaving spells, creating this, this illusion, the mystery and intrigue that is this piece of art, you know, and, 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 and that's the magic of art of creativity, of the nature of the universe. I truly, the, the older I get, the more life I live and the more I create, the more I understand that the nature of reality, the nature of the universe, the nature of everything is creativity. And, and, and all humans have that spark. And anytime you want to get up and be creative, you can, like, you don't have to be a pro at it, right? Like everybody doodles on the phone or, you know, I don't know, people used to, I remember my mom just like doodling on the phone. Like, people do that with cell phones. I don't know. Uh, but you know, anybody can be creative, whether it's, whether it's music or scrapbooking or photography or, you know, filming home movies and putting them together or, you know, making a card for your friends or, you know, going out and making a fort in the woods or really anything like, like you creativity is human special power. Like if you look around, you know, everything has like a special power, right? Like I always talk about the beavers cause we got the beavers in the woods here. We got the, we got the beaver lagoon and you know, their special power is making dams and you know, they do it for themselves. They make that dam to create a safe habitat to procreate and make babies so that that's their purpose. Right. But at the same time, that is they are a keystone species is what the scientists would like to call it, right? Where they create habitat that, you know, they create this habitat that all these other life forms benefit from, right? And everything in life is like that. You know, when an artist is sitting there creating 
working on their craft, which is extremely personal and extremely self-serving and it's extremely introspective, you know, and, 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 uh, focused on yourself. You are, you, because that is your skill, you are, you are serving humanity in the best way possible. That's what you were put here to do, right? That's what I was put here to do. And every human being, I believe, does have a creative purpose, right? I think if you find yourself in a non-creative life, it's going to be hard to really feel like you're evolving and growing and being and, 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 and feeling truly fulfilled in life, right? That is human superpower. We, if you look at us at us, if you look at us, if you look at humans as a species, we evolve incredibly fast because of that creativity. Our egos are there as this competitive device that we want to outcompete the people around us and be and, and and make something new, make a new piece of technology, right? The whole if you step back, the whole arc of human history is the development of technology, right? The first scene in 2001 when they're looking at the bone and they're figuring it out and they're beating the fuck out of each other. That's like so prophetic, right? And then it's the, and then they throw it up and then it's the space station. And then it's, you know, the story of humans is the story of technology. You know, you can go a level deeper and, and, and get into the, you know, ultra terrestrial realm and, and think, you know, we are probably, we are probably technology. We are probably made by, you know, I mean, all human creation stories are us being created by someone else. Right. So I like to think we are technology. That makes a lot of sense to me in everything that I've seen and heard and that we are creating technology Right, and the whole arc of human history is the development and the evolution of technology. Right, and it's and it's people say bad, and people say good, and people say it's destroying the world, and people say this and that. But you know, if you look at it, it's happening. Right, and 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 Mother Nature doesn't make mistakes. Right, so it's happening for a purpose. We are creating technology. We are unstoppably compelled good luck not being involved in the creation of technology and the evolution of technology look what we're doing right now making a video that's going out to everybody on the internet right when i was a kid when i was growing up i never could have done this i couldn't jump on youtube and fucking have my own video that went out to everybody in the world <clears throat> that anybody who wanted could click on this and watch it you know depending on where they live and how restrictive how how restrictive the government that they live under just the rules that they live under you know what i'm saying fuck the rules there are no rules rules are here to be broken and technology breaks all the rules technology comes along and fucks everybody's head up we're talking about ai yesterday right comes along and scares the fuck out of everybody yet it's nobody will put it back in the box right Cloning, cloning humans, right? You know people are cloning humans out there, right? Making more and more sophisticated weapons to destroy each other, making atomic bombs, making things that could blow up the planet, right? We won't put it back in the box. Maybe we'll be scared enough to like, you know, keep it on the shelf, but guess what? We're still developing it, developing it, testing it, testing it, developing it, developing it, and it has a life of its own, right? All of these things are, the, the idea of, 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 I think the, the, there's a lot of false premises in human thinking. And I think a great false premise is artificial intelligence, right? What's artificial about it, right? Who are we to say what's artificial? What if we are artificial intelligence by our own definition and we just don't even realize it, right? What if we are the singularity and we are the sentient, you know, th th we are the technology that's become sentient and gotten out of control and is doing the, you know, ruining the world. <laughs> If you look at it, I think we already are what we're afraid of, right? We already are that thing. And, and we're just afraid we might make something that comes along and does it even better. But if we're, if mother nature is allowing us to do that, allowing us, if mother nature has created us to do that, if the art gods are compelling us to do this, right? This unstoppable force, right? AI has come along and been the most quickly adopted technology of all time and it's the most transformative technology that's ever been created 
you know, since the internet, but it's, but, but the leap forward is, is going to be larger than that. I mean, think about that. Think about the, for the heads that have been around pre mainstream internet and how much the world has changed in the blink of an eye in the, in a decade and now two decades, right. Of, of, of the mainstream adoption of it. Now think about how much AI is going to change everything even faster than that. Right. And a lot of people will sit around and be really scared about it because people love to be scared and people are going to talk about how bad it is. But if you sit back and really think about it, think about it for yourself. Does Mother Nature make mistakes? Was the meteors that are that have slammed into the earth and created extinction level events, are those mistakes? You know, are wildfires mistakes? Are floods mistakes? Are plagues mistakes? Is COVID a mistake? Right? Forget about who made it. Forget about who is responsible for it. You know, even when even when people talk to me, I'm like, this person's talking to me, but also life is talking to me, right? There's a message from life in there because nothing is one thing. Nothing is one source. Nothing happens for one reason, right? Does Mother Nature really make mistakes? The more I actually stop and think about it, it's hard to think that. It's it's hard to think that what humans are doing is a mistake. Now people will be like, oh, listen to this guy, he's a fucking idiot. Like, da, 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 you know? And I'm not trying to say anybody's wrong because I tend to think like nobody's wrong and nobody's right. Nobody's wrong and nobody's right. Right? No matter what someone thinks, it's coming from somewhere. It's coming from some experience that is true to them, makes sense to them. And that probably resonates with a lot of people that are in their sphere, right? And if you were brought up like them, you would probably think the same shit, right? You'd probably, you know, if you were raised around those people, born into the families that, that you disagree with, you'd probably think just like them and vice versa, right? So once you get beyond wrong and right, and and human judgment and 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 you know trying to trying to judge an infinite cosmos in which we just arrived in based on our very limited tools of perception tools of deduction i mean we can barely understand our own existence our own consciousness our own purposes right Yet we have the audacity to think like we understand and we, we're in charge and we're going to control this thing. And we're calling the shot. We're calling the shots here, partner. We're calling the shots here, partner. Okay. You know, it just, it doesn't quite add up if you really think about it. Right. And we're now we're really going. This is really some ghost trip and friends podcast territory. Y'all we posted on the Patreon and we're trying to bring it back. We're trying to work it back in. We're going to build back up because now I'm getting pretty hungry and thirsty to, to share these combos with some friends, right? Y'all probably getting pretty bored of just hearing me talk already. I mean, I, I almost am, right? Uh, and I really want to have some great combos. I was just chilling with Jesse Moynihan and, and Pat. Uh, Pat. <laughs> Shout out, Pat. Shout out, Patrick McCall. I would love to chill with my man, Pat. We got to get him on the podcast, right? Penn was chilling with Penn and Jesse my my brothers in adventure time my hermanos de <laughs> tiempo de <laughs> what is adventure adventura <laughs> is that it <laughs> oh shit spanish one for 2.5 years baby i got fucking took spanish one in middle school had to take it again in high school got to spanish two but got kicked out <laughs> for being a pump, for being a hooligan, and the only one that would fit in my schedule was Spanish one again. So I got two and a half years of Spanish too, y'all. That's a solid foundation. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm itching to get back on the pod and have some great conversation with friends. Had an amazing alien conversation with Jesse like <laughs> we're sitting there and I'm just like buzzing off the Grammys and telling him some of that shit you know we're having a little have a little drink and 
and then you know me and Jesse love aliens and we're we're really both like way too far down the rabbit hole to the point where like you know we have to be careful how we talk about it around friends and family members because people will get like you know their brains burnt out and stuff and and we'll connect and talk about it and then so we're you know this kind of the conversation is kind of shifting and he goes you know I don't know if you're ready to talk about this yet but where are you at with aliens? And I was just like, oh shit. Like, I was just like, let's go. And we dove in and did a whole fucking catch up with aliens. And, and Penn is, you know, Penn's a more like <laughs> quiet guy. And he's sitting there, he's on his iPad. Penn's always drawing like on a napkin or a piece of paper or whatever. His amazing, beautiful Penn world drawings. And he's there on an iPad and he's there drawing. And he's like, He's chiming in, and I'm like, oh, what do you think about that pen? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm like, do you know that guy, pen? And he's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you know? And, uh, and then, uh, you know, he's like sitting there drawing, and we're like, you know, kind of round, rounding out that conversation, and Penn's like, cool alien conversation. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just so classic. So I, would, I know Penn's really shy about getting on pods, and, you know, he is where he's at, and he's, and he's, he's become such a, person that people project on and you know he's he's grappling with the level of fame that he has i would love to get him on the pod um you know jesse's been on the pod a couple times he was we when we tried to bring it back a year ago i can't believe it was already a year ago he was on that one caught up with him about jesus 2 check out his jesus 2 project his crypto project is to me right now the most exciting thing happening in animation jesus 2 jesse moynihan uh, but yeah, we got to get back on the pod. But yeah, these deep combos, this deep shit, thinking about that, thinking about that, th really thinking about shit, right? Don't just think about what other people are going to think about what you're thinking and what they would say and what the reaction like that would be. And, 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 and think about what you can think about that other people said about this thing, right? You know, you got to take the time to dive in and think about it for yourself. You know what I'm saying? So we'll leave it there for today, y'all. Little shrimp for breakfast, y'all. Little shrimp for breakfast. Go to GoShrimpGlobal.com. Pick up some merch. Sign up for the workshop. Grab the book. And subscribe. And never miss another shrimp for breakfast, y'all.